welcome back. Um, I'm Tony, still building my Tiger One late variant tank from uh, Armatech. Um, the long awaited option packs have arrived, um, and I'm, uh, so I've just set up a bench test for the main components, and I thought I'd just talk you through this. So, um, obviously, on top of the purchase of the tank, you're going to need to purchase the, the main batteries that will drive the tank or power the tank up. All the option packs for motion, um, sound, recoil, the uh, lighting. Uh, so I've basically followed the, the instructions down to the, the letter from Armatech. Um, I've set my batteries up in series, so you can probably see that I've connected them in series. I'm now getting 24 volts from from them. Um, I sort of I have got a little multimeter, so this is quite a help, helpful little tool to make sure to test the batteries and to make sure that you're getting what you need from them. So linked up in series, that's given me 27 volts, which is perfect. Anything below 13 volts each, I think you probably need to charge the batteries. I've also got them uh, conditioned and charged with individual CTEC chargers, uh, which I find I've used these for my quad um, and uh, my car when it's in the garage. A brilliant piece of kit they, they condition the batteries without um, damaging the batteries so I've got the um, speaker set up I've got the main drive motor set up I've got the recoil set up um, I've got the turret set up and I've got the uh, elevator for the um, barrel now the recoil um, module is, is here just so I can test it because it forms part of the the main wiring loop looks a bit of a mess I still don't know how I'm going to fit it all in the tank correctly, but um, I'm sure I'll work that out. So the first thing um, I had to do was to set the transmitter up with the um, with the little receiver, um, and I had to bind it. I had a nightmare. This is the, the, the exact same um, setup as Armatech recommend on their website and on the many users of the Armatech forum, um, but it's quite a complicated piece of kit. I'm going to be honest, I gave up, um, so I took it to a local model shop uh, near where I live. Um, they got Those guys also scratched their head for a while, although they're, they're quite experienced um, model flyers. But anyway, they managed to bind the set with uh, the receiver for me. Didn't take them long once they got their head around it. Um, I just thought I didn't want to waste too much time. Um, and once it's bound, it should be fine. Um, and I, if I get into trouble, I guess I can... Um, I can go back to see them, but the, the rest of it has been pretty simple. Uh, all the channels are set up um, at, in accordance with what um, Armatech suggests. I've got the sound working, although um, I've got the sound for the drive working and um, synced with the drive motors, but I can't seem to get the barrel, um, the gun barrel noise to work, but I'm sure I'll work that out in, in time. So just to just to demonstrate. So that's the noise engines set to idle I'm holding these so that when they start spinning they don't fall over so as I'm accelerating the tank the noise is reflected I can turn that down so I can and you can see the the drives working I've also got the this here, if you can see this, this is the elevator for the gun. So that's working. And I've got the, the motor that drives the turret rotation working as well. So that's the sound card synced, the gun elevator, the turret rotation and both drives now working beautifully with my handset so that's the bench test well worth doing um, I can't imagine trying to put all this in the tank and then getting it wrong and trying to work out what the problems are um, I'm trying to think the things that the, the advice I would give you really it's just a uh, patience very very much patience if you're a newbie like me to radio controlled um, vehicles um, I would go along with what they recommend but if you get stuck, go to a local model shop. They're normally very, very helpful guys. Um, I just, you know, just, just um, blown away how generous they were with their time. And they got really excited about the fact that 
this uh, this Armatec tank when I showed them the photographs. So I'm now going to start assembling and putting in some of the components into the tank. So I've taken the, the, the hull cover off, the turret off, and I'm now going to go ahead and install the two drive motors. Again, I'm just going to follow the instructions that you get with the motion pack options, um, and I'll see how we get on. So I've got all the electronics now inside the tank, albeit loosely. Uh, batteries are all connected. I've got the speakers in, although I'm having some difficulty getting the sound card to work. Uh, the receiver's bound with the, um, with the radio set. I've installed the motors. I've temporarily installed the gun elevator and the uh, turret mechanism. Now, although I've myself and my son have worked out uh, to a large extent uh, getting all this working it's not working as exactly how we want it but anyway i'm going to carry on with the mechanical installation of the elevator the recoil system um, and the turret rotation but i just thought i'd show you that um, what i did is i've, te I've been test as you saw um, and then what i wanted to do is just check the motors so we've got the motors operating now my son managed to get it to work on a single stick, although uh, we're having difficulty with the sort of the balancing of it. Excuse me, I'm just going to bring this around so I can show you. So we've got single stick operation. It's running both tracks, but they're not running at the same speed. We have the, the gun elevator working. I was using the left stick and the turret, again using the left stick. But having a bit of a nightmare with the sound card, um, we haven't even approached the smoke system or the recoil system, but I'm hoping today um, I'm gonna get all of those elements built and I will, I will film that um, and I'll just show you on, if I can find somewhere to put the radio set without damaging it. So there's both tracks, single stick operation. But as you can see, you, they're not working at the same speed. However, we've managed to get it to turn. I think we're, we're we're very close. We are very very close. Uh, There's a great guy on the Armatech uh, forum, um, Adrian, and he's going to pop down and help me just finalise all the the uh, setup of the sound card and everything else. So we're almost there. Um, again, all I'd say is um, when you're doing this, use reach out to the forum. There's some great guys on there on the Armatech forum because if you've never done this before, like myself. Uh, it's extremely complicated to set the radio setup, not the electronics. Armatech have made it quite simple, it's plug and play, so far anyway. Um, I may change my mind when we come to dealing with the sound card and the uh, recoil system and the smoke system, but so far it is very reasonably straightforward. The only other thing I was going to mention now was I've got these batteries charging or conditioned using these CTEC chargers. Um, I don't use them all the time, but um, I'm charging them individually. I just need to work out a way of uh, getting the cables. So these are hardwired onto the, the battery. Um, I just need to be able to work out a way of presenting it. So my task for today is to install the um, elevator, the turret, all the elements that go with that, possibly the recoil system. And then I'm gonna try and work out how to tidy this up. So I've got some old Perspex in my garage, some aluminum angle. And I may build some shelves here to be able to elevate some of this stuff up because I want to be able to get access to it, especially to things like the sound card, um, the main power module, um, and the controls for the smoke, etc. And all, of course, the receiver. So um, I'll sort of carry on and we'll see how we get on. So um, I've got the, the main hull up on its side, uh, so I've, and I've installed the the sort of main gear mechanism, albeit quite loosely at this stage, just so allow me to install the turret. But there's a couple of things to note. So 
uh, when you finish the main build of the tank, whatever you do, keep all the fixings, keep everything. Don't throw anything away or and, and keep them in their original bags um, because you're going to need some of these to install some of the, the gear onto the tank. Um, they send you some fixings but they also say in the instructions to, to use some of the fixings from the original build. So I've got, a, I've got my fixings I'm going to need for the installation of the turret motor. I can go away now. And the only other thing I'd like to mention is, I wish I'd have known it early days, but when I, when I installed this sort of small rounds, this is the ring that sort of protects the turret from small rounds, um, obviously a scaled down version. Over here, there's two fixings that are going to be required to put the, to secure the, the turret motor. Um, if I'd have had these ahead, I, I would have installed them because this ring, as I don't know if you can see on the camera, but this ring traps this thing here. So, um, I mean, it might be worth you sort of just checking the size of the fixing required before you put this ring in. But I managed to get it off. Um, I did use uh, Loctite on it, but I've used a hot air dryer or a hot air gun to uh, loosen and slacken off the adhesive. So I managed to get to those. So now I'm gonna concentrate on um, installing the turret motor. The only other thing I would say that when you put in the, the main gear ring, um, remember there is one fixing that's smaller than the rest on this. Um, and I would just, I just uh, simply marked that so I knew uh, where it was in the right position. So, so that's that. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and install the uh, turret motor and and we'll probably speed all this up.
So I just thought I'd uh, show you the layout as I've got it set up. So I have my control switches mounted on the rear access panel which was the radiator grill and that's got the on and off switch for the main tank and the smoke on and off switch. I've extended this lead here for the smoke switch to allow me to just position the main power pack down here. I've installed a retaining bar here to stop the batteries moving around. Um, I've also put a retaining bar here to allow me to slightly position the speakers. And then on, on here I've just mounted this, the sort of motor control on this shelf part here, just to keep it tidy. Um, I've also attached the main receiver to this. And so I've, this is my layout, how I've arranged it. And now what I'm going to do is just show you the tank in action. So also before I go, these are the charging leads that go to my CTEC chargers that charge these batteries. Um, and um, I'm very pleased with the, 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 the complete setup. I've also got a tube which then connects through here up into the little vent at this side, uh, which I'll show you when the main hull cover goes back on. All right, so um, obviously you saw the bench test. I've now installed all the mechanics into the tank. Uh, all the electronics are all connected up. The batteries are uh, operational. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it took a bit of working out, but only for sort of positioning things inside the tank. But again, I think that's personal preference. Um, everything was fine apart from I just could not get this radio set to do what I wanted it to do with the tank. Um, firstly, I wanted it to be single stick drive rather than both sticks, because that's pretty much the default stage. Uh, you get with this plus I just I couldn't I just couldn't get the sound card to work properly so I reached out to the Armatech forum and uh, I got a lot of help from people on there but a great bunch of guys so knowledgeable and so willing to give up their you know their time and expertise one guy in particular Adrian um, he, he he was he was a little shining star he, he actually came out visited me and spent a few hours with me in fact a whole day um, talking and just getting into this and he tweaked everything as um, and taught me so much uh, about setting this up so I'm really 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 pleased um, with the way this is operational the only things are the uh, out of the box there was a problem with the servo for the machine gun that's faulty um, and the switch for the smoke uh, device is also faulty there's power going in but there's no power going out so I've tested that so I'm going to contact um, Armatech and um, hopefully they'll replace those so I thought I'd just give you a bit of a run through of the controls of the tank. So very first thing is always switch the radio on first rather Welcome than the model. I've positioned the uh, on and off switch at the back here. Um, I'll show you that in a, another video. Um, so I'm going to turn the tank on. And that's the sound card just kicking in. So I'm going to come around here. So this is the, the handset. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take you through the motions. So uh, one of the things I really like on the sound card is this uh, false start. Uh, so with the switch, this switch here, this has been set up, and I've followed it. I followed the um, the tuning well, on the sound card. It tells you what you know which ones do which. So you've got they're labelled one to eight different sound effects. So the very first one is five clicks forward, one down, back to the centre. And that's your full start, which I think is I think is really cool. Um, it just it just brings a bit of really you know realism to it. So now we'll go for the full start. So that's one forward, back to the centre, one down, back to the centre. That's it in its idling stage. And then what we want to do is give it the impression that it's going to engage gears. So that's two forward, one down. Back to the center. Now that's going to synchronize with the uh, the drive mechanism, and and you'll now start hearing the acceleration and deceleration. I'm able to drive the uh, the tracks because I've got it elevated with my motorcycle jack um, and a makeshift, well not a makeshift now, but I made a bit of a pit, which I'll give you a bit more of a rundown at the end of this. So that's that, and then we've got the turret operation. 
gun elevation. And then we'll get the main gun to fire. To show you that with the lights. And then we've got the machine gun. Although the servos not working very well, the light's working on it. And we got some voice you can add into it. That's the sound of the turret, but that's at number eight. But I don't think we need to use that. Single stick operation, which is what I wanted. This stick controls the turret movement left and right and then up and down for the gun elevator. I just turn it, turn the sound card off. So that's that. Uh, the only other thing to show you would be the, the light. You can see that. Probably zoom in actually. So turn the light on, a little Bosch light. Um, and you can see that the problem I've got with the servo, it's very, yeah, it's not good at all. So that just needs to be replaced. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really pleased. I'm gonna just uh, probably fire that cannon again, just to shoot. So it's three clicks up, one down. And I've positioned the LED just inside the, the muzzle of here and I've used a rubber grommet down the other end of the barrel to stop the cable sliding in and out. So that's that's done. Um, I think that's quite effective. I know people put blank firing things on this and everything else and take it another level up and who knows, that might be something I'll do in the future. But for now, no, I'm, I'm happy where it is. So I've just got to wait now until I get all the uh, components replaced. Just come around here, turn the tank off that access panel turn the handset off and that's it done so um it's an incredible journey i've had I've, I've absolutely loved every minute of this really have and um apart from the couple of little teething uh, issues i've got with uh, some of the components which it's actually a small problem that i'm really really thrilled um so uh, the next video i'll do is will be i'll i'll wait until i've got those two things resolved um, I've got the two 12 inch figures coming for the top of the turret, which will be animated um, and work together on that. Um, I'll take it out into my garden. So I've got three different surfaces I've, I've tested it on. Uh, one was I've got gravel immediately outside my garage. I didn't want to drive it on the gravel because I was worried about the small um, pebbles and, and uh, gravel getting picked up in the tracks because it is only cast aluminium and I'm frightened that it might a, possibly break a track link or even worse, damage the sprocket. Um, so what I did is I've got a, a, an old carpet which I just turned upside down, rolled it out and I drove the tank over the top of that onto my hard patio, navigated the tank round into the back garden, uh, drove it to, for a good 10-15 minutes on the uh, patio hard surface, perfect, upgraded exactly as I would like to see. The only thing is I did notice that the tracks were too slack. So although I put in two less links uh, than Armatech recommended in the instructions already, I felt it needed to another one removed just to tighten the tracks up. So that's happened and I've adjusted the uh, idler wheels. So I'm much happier now with the, the way the tracks are operating. Um, then I took it on to grass. Um, I would say that it works per perfect on grass, but if you're 
if you've got uh, you know if you've got a model lawn um, and it's like a bowling green don't put this on there because it's going to chew it up I, I was very careful I didn't do any tight turns didn't do fast turns or anything like that and I'm not that precious about my grass it's cut short and nice and neat but it, it worked perfectly on the grass I'm able to mount up onto the patio it's probably about a four inch difference in the height of the patio and the grass so that handle it no problem just go slowly when you when you're you know dealing with obstacles like that i'm still learning how to drive this um thoroughly enjoying it though uh and really pleased with the way everything's come out the only things i would also just talk you through so a couple of things so obviously a table lift i've had um but i adapted it so i put a a wider base using 18 mil ply and then i also put two um, effectively the same width as the tracks to uh, raised areas and that gives me a higher area a gap here to be able to slide my motorcycle jack in underneath and wind it up because I don't want to store this on its directly on its wheels because I think over time the torsion bar system could stretch potentially so I've elevated the tank and I will elevate the tank it's actually a really good way to maintain it as well so that once it's elevated you can just slowly move the tracks around using a remote to just check if there's any debris in there and then use an air hose or a brush to get it get rid of it and then the only other thing was I bought this very cheap ramp fold up ramp it's about 45 pounds UK uh, English pounds um, and I just found that taking it off the table was fine albeit very slowly and gently but getting it back on was a nightmare because it was it, the aluminium was clashing with the tracks um, and started sliding so what I've simply just done is cut up an old doormat stuck it on works perfectly so a um, bit heat for obviously in that but it works perfectly and then I just put drilled a couple of holes in my table and just put a couple of pins in to stop this thing sliding off when the when the tank when the full weight of the tank goes onto it so just careful patience um, you know getting this on and off the table I, I don't know how you would do it other than the way I've got I'm sure people have got their own ways of doing it but anyway I so the things to, to to bear in mind when you when you set out to build one of these tanks is as I said before you need the space definitely need the space and time of course uh, needless to say and the money um, but you need to have invest in one of these you can get them second hand reasonably cheap off you know off many websites um a table lift um to allow you to elevate the tank up work on the tank move the tank around because once now this is you just will not move this thing um and then a ramp and then just a motorcycle jack to you know lift it up a little bit higher um and then just uh just enjoy it and so i you know i, I talked to the armatec forum guys a lot of the the, the some bit you know they're saying there's some builders out there that buy these tanks underestimate the time it's going to take to put together and and the patience that's required and then give up which is which is, which is um you know that's a sad that's sad because it's a very expensive thing to buy first time around um and just you know you need to persevere take your time be patient check out the, the armatech website for help from other users and builders um, and if you make a mistake you can go back it's not the end of the world if you really mess up you can buy spare parts from Armatech and replace anything that you have damaged but I, I don't think you'd fall into that I think if you just take it nice and easy um, and just be completely patient it will work out for you but you know for, for whatever you do if you make any investment make the investment of time as well and don't give up so that's me um, I'm done for now uh, the next time I'll see you is when I've got this thing operational with the smoke and the servo replaced and the two characters in the top here um, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh, I'd like to thank you if you have joined me on this journey I really like to thank you for doing that and um, I hope I've helped you in some way I hope I've tried to simplify some of the things that you may have difficulty or have difficulty with um, but you know again if you like this subscribe thumbs up you know what to do I'm Tony and I've just built a Targa tank see you soon